And hello everyone, welcome to part 2 of using git in the Windows command prompt. In the last video, I actually talked about how we can just use uh, git.exe and it will, use, it will just show, this, show all of these things. Now, um, this is important, yeah? This is very important to know uh, how, how actually to get this working. Now, in the last video, I also talked about something called environment variables. Okay, when you just type uh, env inside your Windows search, you will have this. Okay, you will have this. Yeah, you will have this. Um, and let's see, uh, environment, yeah, environment variables. And you you should be able to change it just by uh, clicking on this environment variables under system properties. Okay. And the way to edit the specific environment variable we want is to go to this one called path and then we'll just edit it. Now you notice that uh, uh, git and uh, git cmd is on this path. So uh, what does that mean? Okay, it means that anything inside this folder, any exe file inside this folder, it will be able you will be able to execute it from anywhere in your command prompt. So let me show you. You go to git, you go to cmd you see this thing called git.exe and you open your command prompt uh, cls you do git.exe it's able to execute what if uh, what if the folder is not on this path directory you can see this uh, path directory here what if, the fold what if the folder is not here then your exe files won't be executable so for example git bash.exe okay, let's try git bash.exe uh, it will not be recognized Okay, so uh, so how can you change this? Okay, if you want to really change this, you just uh, you add the you have to add the folder to this directory. Okay, so I want to add c colon backslash program files program files git. C, uh, I'm not going to use the cmd folder. I'm just going to use the git folder, and then I'll click OK. I'll click OK, and I'll click OK here. I'll exit and then I'll restart. And now when I run git bash.exe, you will be able to uh, find git bash. Okay, so that is, uh, I guess, part one. Okay, 2.35, yeah, 2 minutes 35 seconds in. Uh, so let's talk about the second part, okay? Now, normally when we, we want to run git, we don't, we don't want to keep typing .exe over here. Okay, we don't want to keep typing the .exe file here. So how do we uh, you know, make sure that you, we won't have this problem? Okay, the answer is with uh, batch files. Now remember, um, batch files uh, are just here to help you, uh, are just here to help you uh, execute certain .exe files. And if you want to execute many .exe files in succession, um, you can do so. So for example, explorer.exe, it will open Explorer one time. Okay, if I op uh, do explorer.exe three times, okay, that's one. Okay, explorer.exe second time, it will open another file. And if I do it three times, I will be able to open uh, Explorer three times on this PC. Okay. Uh, so let's let's me actually. Uh, well, I won't use Vim just yet to save some complications let's let's do a new text file using notepad which is a very simple uh simple thing open and let's call it open 3 explorertxt okay and what we type here is exactly what we type in the command line command prompt uh, command prompt explorer.exe 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 and we will save this and then we can copy this file and paste it here and then we'll save it instead of, uh, of a txt file we'll, we will uh, we will just uh, uh, use we will call this uh, we'll change this into a batch file so i'm going to function f2 open 3 explorer and then uh, we'll change it to bat okay so what happens here? Well, if you change directory to desktop and you use dir, 
you will see that this uh, batch file actually should appear open 3 explorer.bat so open if you run open 3 explorer from this file you don't need to type the .bat it will be able to open explorer three times so I uh, hope you see where I'm going with this uh, the moment you call your batch file something okay if you name your bat batch file something for example uh, explorer or what you won't be needing to you won't need to type all the exe files all the time so if I were to copy and paste, uh, if I were to copy and paste this batch file, I'll change this to git.bat and then instead of uh, explorer.exe three times, you just change it to git.exe. Okay, you change it to git.exe and what do I do? I'll, I'm going to put it inside the, the, the correct path, which is cmd over here. And then I will put my git.bat over here. Now need administrator permission which is fine uh, I am the administrator of this computer and I just want to do a bit of a cleanup I want this to be gone oh, shift delete I want to empty my recycle bin with all this unnecessary uh, unnecessary garbage okay so um, let's see yeah then we can run git Okay, and suddenly now git is open. I didn't need to close and open. So the moment I run git, maybe git status, it will say not a git repository. So this is how you get rid of the exe thing just to make life a bit more convenient and easy for yourself. Okay, that's all. Thanks for watching.